So it's a whole lot of talk about if your purpose comes before marriage. I want to get you guys' thoughts about it. I feel like purpose does become, I mean, comes before marriage because, you know what I mean, if you don't need even know who you are as a person, you know, how you going to make it work with the other person? I feel like you need a sense of self, a sense of insecurity. Uh, a sense of security to kind of establish, you know, a base of that relationship. If you're confused and you don't know who you are as a person, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. how are you going to make it work with the other person who's probably just as confused as you? That's chaos already starting off the bat. So I think you need a, a good base, you know, a good sense of self to kind of just get the ball rolling in a sense. And just like, I feel like that fluctuates the relationship a lot better. If you know what I mean? Like if you're securing yourself and you secure who you are, like, I feel like you already steps ahead of the game, in my opinion. What you thinking about it, Steph? You agree with him? When you ask that question, you're talking about a man, right? Yeah, I'm talking about a man. Yeah, I, I think a man, absolutely, 120%. Your purpose got to come before. A, a woman don't want no loser. If you're a man, you you about your business, you're on your purpose, and you you achieving, you succeeding, I mean, you're more attractive. So you you, you got to put that first. You got to chase excellence first and then women second and not to chase women first and chase excellence seconds. You will get all the women you won't chase in excellence. You will lose all the women chasing women. They're they going to chase the other men who chase in excellence anyway. So it's like you, 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 you going to put yourself in a winner's circle by doing that. Mm. You, you'll get one chasing that one. You will lose them chasing the other. So a hundred percent, man, you, you gotta, you gotta put that first. I think, I think putting a relationship with a woman first over you as a man trying to achieve is stupid. I know that's a strong opinion, but I 100 percent believe I done it. So I, I just I just think it's a bad idea. <laughs> what about you, Sweeney? Um, it depends on what context you're asking the question in. Are you saying that a man should know his purpose before he thinks about marriage, or are you saying he should have completed his purpose before he should uh before he's married? I think you probably should answer both. That's a good that's a good analysis. I would say does he need to complete his purpose? No. Nah, no. Nah. I, no, I don't think, I so. think, honestly. That could take a lifetime. I don't even think a man has to know his purpose before he before he's married. Now, chasing women, I'm in absolutely agreeing. I don't yeah. think you should be out there chasing ass yeah. over a waste of time. doing what you need. I think every man should know the general direction of what it is to do right. What it is to, what it is to be a, 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 a practical member of society. Mm -hmm. Once you get that down, I think you'll be fairly okay in any relationship that you're in. So I don't think you need to know exactly what you want to do in life because most people don't. Because I think marriage is required at an early age. Because for instance, say for instance, a man does wait until he knows his purpose, completed it, what have you. By that time, is he really going to be willing to have he might be old. the finish line? He might be old. I think there's a lot of variables in that. I, I, I think if you... In your 20s or 30s, I think you should be pursuing your purpose as a man, not pursuing women. I think if you're in your 40s or 50s, you probably already have hit most of your purpose and you kind of know what it is. And I, it's, just, it's, just, it's just a lot of variables in that, man. It's, it's a lot of variables in that. Damn, so you're saying if you hit your 40s, then you ran out of purpose? Like I'm the saying purpose you, just stops there for most? I'm saying if you hit your 40s, you probably done already got a lot of, a lot a lot of, of your things. purpose. Mm -hmm. so if you, you want to be a, a, a real estate investor or start some fashion design or be some a sports agent for athletes, I mean, by the time you're in your 40s, you probably done kind of got to it by mm -hmm. then. Yeah. In your 20s, you still trying to figure so much stuff out. Like you, you chasing women, you trying to chase money in your 20s, you ain't getting either one of them. But most men in their 40s, by that time, they probably done... So getting to some finances and you know your your, your purpose is attached to that. I, think. I was gonna say I think I think if because I'm I'm in total agreement with you where chasing women should never be. I think that's a young man's game as far it as is. Current. I think twenty to eight like we all chase tail between yeah. eight to sixteen and roughly twenty something. That's pretty mm -hmm. much most of the time what you're gonna do. Sixteen to thirty. <laughs> but shit, not sixteen to thirty. But shit, got chased it too long, man. But like it, like sixteen to twenty. You pretty like you you gonna be chasing tail. Yeah. There's, there's no ifs ands or buts about it. I think by the time you by the time you are of age where you're about to graduate, either graduate college or finish trade school, I think you need to get very serious about where you see yourself going in life. And and like I said, I don't think you need to necessarily come have completed your purpose, but you need to know by that time what trajectory you're going yeah, through. Yeah, yeah, mm yeah. -hmm. And I think any woman, I think most women who are normal 
are okay with that. Yeah. It's the ones who don't know where they're going. Where when you don't know where you're going, that's where it becomes a problem. They want to attach to the greatest man they can find, which I mean, I guess it's okay. I often run into dude, like I, I talk about this all the time. Like again, y'all know I'm a barber. But I often see barbers who can't just be barbers. So what do you but mean? they they Yeah, what do you mean? What do you mean by that? All right, so you know how they always tell you you need to have multiple sources of income. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. But there's a right way and a wrong way to do that. Most people, a lot of people do it the wrong way. Mm-hmm. What's the wrong they, way? So they, 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 they're a barber, but they only a barber three hours out the day. Then they out there fighting dogs. <laughs> then they trying to sell plates. Then they trying to, they're, they're, they're a jackass of all trades. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's what I like to call them. And I think a lot of those people don't know the trajectory they're supposed to go in life. They just know I got to get money, but they don't necessarily know how to get the money. And they don't know how to stay down and sit down long enough to sustain what they were trying to build to begin with. So they do a whole lot of different shit, hoping that they get a different result. Yeah. yeah. So, and I think those people tend to be purposeless. Yeah. You know? So I think you need to focus on one thing. I think if you, if you have a day job and you're good at it, focus on that day. It's, it's perfectly fine to focus on a day job. I know a lot of men who did it, and by the time they went in forties, fifties, and sixties, they were very, very blessed mm-hmm. by focusing on their day job. Mm-hmm. Now those men spent 15, 20, 25 years at the same company, but they were good at what they did, so they got paid a lot of money for it. Yeah. Now in our generations, that most men ain't gonna do that. So, you know, if you want to do two jobs, side hustle, whatever it is that you're good at, pursue that and become really, really good at it. Mm. And I think the rest kind of handles itself. I don't think women have to chase a purpose, but I think as a man, you have to chase a purpose. I think the man who chases his purpose, other men look up to, and other women want to be with. I think every I think every man should should have something he's living for. And then also, I think if you your natural progression, if you stick to something and you master it and you continue on with that, the natural progression in life is that you will naturally grow within that. So for instance, to start off as a plumber, right? Yeah. Most mm-hmm. plumbers don't come out the gates making a shit ton of money. No. Nah. They start off as apprentices and things like that. And you mm-hmm. only make 20, 30,000 at this point. But what happens is, is as you get older, the more experienced you get, by the time you hit 45, 50, you done spent 20 some years at the same job. Uh-huh. You done got all the experience you can. How they become people who can make north of six figures is that now they can take all the skill they learn within this business and go and open up their own I was business. just about to say that. Most, most of the time, by that point, they, they, they hang their own shingle. And that's how, that's the natural progression in life. If you, if you know your purpose and you stick to it, the natural progression is that you're going to automatically, some point, get better. If you, if you stay stagnant, you're doing something wrong. Yeah, if you, mm-hmm. if you stay in the same position for 30 years, you didn't want to grow. You didn't, you didn't want to grow. Because naturally, your life supposed to, you're supposed to grow. Yeah. It's, hard, it's very hard to stay stagnant. Mm-hmm. Or if you it's stay stagnant, you're doing a whole lot to, to, to remain in that position. Or you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. It's, it's a choice. It's definitely a choice. It's easy to stay stagnant. I feel like a lot of yeah. people just choose that yeah. life because it's just easy. You know what I mean? Like It's, just, it's easy to kind of just be, kind of just level to where you are. Like It takes more out of you yeah. to kind of just grow. It takes, it takes a lot of effort. If you, you want to sleep three or four hours a night, to chase success, a lot most, of people don't want to do that. Yeah, most people don't want to get up at four a.m. and just hours a day. You're not getting eight hours of sleep and becoming a millionaire. It's not. You know it's not crazy? happening. I think. I think it's the opposite. I think it's very hard to stay stagnant. I think it's a very. It's very hard to remain stagnant. For instance, you're a boxer, right? Yeah. The only way you can stay stagnant is if you actively choose not to box anymore. Because by you going out and boxing every day, you naturally get better. You naturally learn more because you experience different things. You experience different punches. You throw different punches or what have you. The only way that you can stay standing is if you actively say, you know what? I don't want to box anymore. But don't you think that people who go to their day job every day and just do the same thing and don't do nothing different? Yes and no. Because even if, even if you talk about your day job, the only way that you don't get better at that day job is if you don't do it. Mm-hmm. I think it's if you don't care. I think a lot of people go to do their job every day and they don't really care. They there for a paycheck. They clock in eight hours. They clock out at the eight hours and they go home and they don't think twice about and it. And what's crazy though, those be the people that tend to stay at the job the longest. Yeah, the, the society needs worker bees. Uh, but that's work. the crazy part. But they normally are the most stable. The one, how many times have y'all seen the people who didn't give a damn about the job, but they come in every day. They yeah, clock the in every day and they clock out at the same time every day. 
but they stay there the longest and they tend to be the most stable because they understand like, hey, look, this is, they may not want to do more, but they understand this is what I got to do to do what I got to do. I may hate this job till I'm blue in the face, but it is what it is. You want to know what people tend to be the ones that come in and out, they swing in and out the doors. People don't know what they want to do. They yeah. don't know they lot in life, yeah. nor do they know what direction they want to go in. At least the person who's stagnant or not necessarily stagnant, the person who's complacent knows that this is what I'm doing. But you got you to also understand too, uh, I think it's a, age plays a huge role in that too. If you have some, a lot of older people don't have some of the exposure and some of the experience that we have. So if you owe this, so let's say I worked the job right and somebody in their 50s, one on 60, close to retirement, I can understand why they would want to stay there because they spent all their life mm -hmm. there already and they may not have the skills necessary to go out and do what we, we can do. Mm -hmm. But if you're in your 20s and your 30s and you're saying that this is life, and this is all that you see, there should be no excuse for that. Yeah. You know, those are the people that I look at and I'm saying, like, there's more to life. Like, I can't believe that you're sitting here because you got to understand you've been brainwashed to think that this retirement is the best that you can do. Mm -hmm. the, whole, the whole time you stand there, you're working for somebody else. You're getting somebody else rich. Like, you're not living life. You can't become a millionaire by working a nine to five. No. You have to step outside. You have to have some other things going on. And I can understand if you're that temporary, but you got to have a plan outside of that plan in order to be better in life. I feel like it's ambition and like the way you were raised too. Like, like how you said about boxing, like if I go there every day, like I'm going to get better. I feel like that's not the case. You know what I mean? Like I can keep hitting the heavy bag with the same old combo because that doesn't mean I'm getting better. You know what yeah, I mean? Like it took great. It took me like putting money in, you know what I mean? Finding the gyms, the gyms that was right for me, going on a diet, like. It took all that, you know, that great and stuff. Effort. It takes effort oh, to effort. kind of progress and get better. You know what I mean? Because I feel like if you not stagnant and you're not growing, then you're failing. But you you could do the same thing every day with very little effort and just stay the same. You can. That's, that's true. That's what you say. You could do that. Like think job. Of it this way. If the if you only think of it this way, say for instance, you was getting hit, you was getting paid to hit the ball with that hit the bag with that combo, right? Yeah. And you became really good at throwing that one combo at that bag. <laughs> yeah. That's basically what I'm saying. Yeah, I, I get it. Now, if you want to grow beyond that, and you like, man, look, I know, I know, I make a decent living hitting this bag with this one-two punch, and I'm making a decent living. Shoot, my kids are good. This, that, and the third. Mm -hmm. It's only, and you, and you like, well, I know I'm doing this. It's all good. This is cool, no. That's when learning more comes into play. Mm -hmm. Is when you want to expand beyond what's where you good at. Mm -hmm. So you, then you want to go out there and hit the f speed bag. Now you want to go out there and spar. Now you want to go out there and do those things. Because yeah. now you naturally, now you're like, okay, I want to. But if, if the only, if somebody came to you and said, hey, look, I'll pay you $100,000 a year to hit this bag with this combo. Most people Yeah, I'll, that, I'll you, get that $100,000. You, you, you would become <laughs> damn good <laughs> yeah. at hitting that bag with that one-two combo. <laughs> yep. Because you do it day in and day out. Yeah. Every single day. Just like, I, I remember I used to work at this plant called Cahane, right? Mind you, they didn't really pay that much. Um, Damn, I think it was like- right under the bus, huh? Mm -hmm. You see, you're still right under the bus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shit, they paid what? I think it was like nine bucks an hour or something like mm -hmm. that. I just got there, right? First day on the job, we had to, you had to, it was, um, we, uh, we, uh, put together the um, the HVAC systems for, I think, the, the Honda cars. Yeah. I don't know if it was Honda or Toyota, but it was one of the Japanese cars. And I started out, and we had to, and it was like nine screws at the top of the thing that oh, you had to screw yeah. in. You did automotive work, too. Okay, I done, done that, so, too. <laughs> me, being fresh there, shit, it was hard as hell, just because you had to, like, you had to get the screw on the thing, because it was all magnetic, yeah, like but yeah. you had to put the screw on there, and then you had to drill them mugs in. Me getting there, only been working there for three weeks, man. That shit was hard as hell. It was dropping screws all over the place yeah. and stuff. Yeah. But there was people there who've been there. There was this one guy who eyes was closed. there. He could literally do it with his eyes closed. Mm -hmm. Mind you, it was the same job. It was simple as hell. Screw nine screws in. He worked that same spot 10, for 20 years. Mm -hmm. He was about to retire and he can do it with his eyes closed. Yeah. But he was, he was about to retire. I think he was, uh, he had already, he had already, he was already a millionaire mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. based on his retirement plan and everything else. Mm -hmm. Had a couple houses and everything else and he can literally screw the mugs in with his eyes closed. 
mm-hmm. but it was a basic ass job that really wouldn't that really didn't pay that much. Mm-hmm. But he was comfortable. Mm-hmm. But he knew how to do that one two combo very fucking well. Mm-hmm. Many people would come in and be like, "All you're doing is screwing screws for a living." Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. All I'm doing is screwing screws for a living. But guess what? I was able to give my kids something that. I, once I'm gone, they got something G- behind. G- GM and Ford do that, and it, it, it's taking care of a lot of families. Mm-hmm. So it's it's a trip that we like. That's why I said it's very hard to. It's very hard to. To stay stagnant in a negative way because just by doing, getting up and doing something, you naturally progress. You, yeah, you naturally progress. Yeah. So to actually not progress or actually not to do anything that requires a conscientious choice. To do nothing. Mm-hmm. Now you're working hard to do nothing. Mm-hmm. Imagine how many people you know where you're like, damn, bro, you, you, you're doing, you're working very hard to not be shit. <laughs> they put in, you know what I mean? They put in hours not doing shit. And you're like, bro, you work just as hard as I do. You, you, you sleep more than I do. And I mean, not just old lazy sleep, like you're tired sleep and you ain't doing shit. Mm-hmm. And I'm getting up and going to work every day. So it's a trip. I think, I think, I don't think that, to get back on topic, I think that, like I said, I think most people need to know their trajectory. Most men need to know the basics of life. And I don't think it takes long for you to figure that out. I think mm-hmm. if as long as you got a decent upbringing, your father is there, your parent mother is there, and they teach you right, going into your twenties, you should know what it is to virtually be a man mm-hmm. and know what is what it takes to do what you need to do. I think most people just need to understand what sacrifice is, know what you need to do to move on, to get on in life. 